Yeah, yeah. We got it on clearance. It weighs like 500 pounds. Eric, I'm confused. What's Jeff opening? I saw something online and I thought of Jeff. It's too early for cameras. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's I've... like five in the morning. Can I get my eye patches before you put me on TV? <laughs> is it is it squealing? Is it live? It's a KFC fire log. <laughs> it's so nice. nice to feel. Make your entire house smell like KFC when you burn it. <coughs> Exco, give it to you. What? Wait for you to get it on your own. Exco, deliver to you. Knock, knock. Open up the door to spread with the non stop pop up and stay. Here we go. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, because I was never not going to be myself. You're sitting next to one on the couch, so let's just say that. Be yourself, but not too much of yourself. Now, here's Jason. Thank you very much. Welcome to The Jason Show. By the way, that what you just saw in our cold open, that was not a joke. But here's the problem. Uh, Jeff has a fireplace, okay? Mm -hmm. But he's never used it, and he's afraid to use it. So, yeah. So, if there are any, and that's right, Jeff, I'm not lying. You've never used your fireplace. I don't know. I'll open the flute. Okay, oh yeah. God. So, if anybody in the Minneapolis St. Paul area is watching, if you are a firefighter and would like to supervise the opening of Jeff's flume, oh my God. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Please email us. Let's start with this. What could be the biggest piece of Easter candy you ever did see? One of our favorite places, Costco. Look at this, is selling a two foot tall chocolate Easter bunny. <clears throat> this bad boy weighs almost four and a half pounds, but there is a little Costco drama happening because, because listen, listen, that big bunny, hollow, hollow. And, and, and the bunny, the hollow bunny, costs more than a Costco membership at nearly six, at nearly 64 bucks. Yeah. People, people on TikTok uh, say that for that price, it needs to be a solid bunny. It needs to be a solid bunny. <laughs> I'll take it either way. I don't care. Let's, Leo, cue that music. Let's start the show. Okay. Audience, give it up for my sidekick sister, Kendall Mark, everybody. Hi. This song. I know I do. I love it's it a too. Good one. Good morning, friend. Or good, good, good day, friend. How you doing? Good day to you. I'd eat that chocolate bunny no matter how you gave it to me. It'd be yeah, fun. I would too. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would. And uh, I don't know. Are you like me? I eat the ear first. Doesn't everybody? I think I eat the. Yeah, I always eat the ear first. Eric, do you eat the ear first? You're the only person don't. I know that would maybe eat like the foot. Sideways. 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 He eats the. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See. Um, Okay, we have some we have some housekeeping things to take care of oh, okay. uh, here. We call this part of the show the desk chat. So uh, let me do some housekeeping. Yeah, this is desk chat. Uh, we're at a desk and I'm chatting with you. So here we go. Hello. We don't spend a long time naming things on this show. So 
First <laughs> off, I want to say thanks again because I'm never going to. And there's like uh, some people get very sensitive if I don't acknowledge everybody. So I want to give another blanket thank you. Up in our office, there is a stack about that big yes. of sympathy cards and gifts and teddy bears and everything for for me and for Colin and me uh, over the loss of uh, of our boxer Dexter about a week ago. I just want to do another blanket thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you understand. I, I haven't opened all of them yet. Uh, it's going to take some time, and when I'm ready to kind of... I, I, I've, I've, I've been struggling, and I have really good days, and I have really bad days, and I'm sure anyone that's gone through this, you can understand. And I've been in a kind of... Um, a, I, I'm still a step off. So uh, when I'm ready to open those, I, I just want to say thank you. Now, that's the serious thing. Now for the funny thing. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's a, there's a Facebook group called the Jason Show fan club and they and Facebook group and they've been on since day one and it's filled and moderated by lovely people like really genuinely the best people and they're our biggest fans mm -hmm. I haven't been on there in a while because I used to be a member but I got off because there's always a few a few people that make it a little toxic and, th and that's not a referendum on the whole group they're lovely but I just I don't need that mentally in my head having said that my mother is in that group. So, <laughs> Jeff's mother is in that group. So, yeah. So, mothers hear and see everything. So, my mother sent me a text message and she said, You need to correct this woman right now. And I said, Oh, Dar was really upset. Mm. There's somebody, one of our new viewers, because you know we're in the Chicago market, there's a woman in Indiana that thinks that I make fun of my home state a little too much. And that Fallon used to make, because we're both from Indiana, right. that Fallon and I collectively made fun of Indiana a little too much. Mm -hmm. I just want to say to the good people of Indiana, <laughs> I'm not making fun of you. I'm not even making fun of current Indiana. I'm making fun of Indiana in the 70s and 80s. Uh, that's it. Thank you. I know several people that don't watch your show anymore. There we go. Uh -huh. It's a joke. Lighten up. I love Indiana. Let's get started. <laughs> it's time for the hot dish. Roll in there. Okay. Make way for the return of JT. We showed you the teaser for Justin Timberlake's new album earlier this week. Now we're getting a taste of his comeback single and video called Selfish. So if I get jealous, I can't help it. I want every bit of you. I guess I'm selfish. It's bad for my mental, but I can't fight it when you're out looking like you do, but you can't hide it. No. There it is. Song is the debut title from JT's new album, which is coming out in March. I said, you know, initially I didn't love it. I didn't capital L love it. I'm love it's growing on me. Oh, it really is kind of growing on me. And that video, I love that video because you may not love JT, you gotta say he can dance. Yes. He, the guy has been able to move from day one mm -hmm. and he still looks good at his age. I'm just gonna say that. Yeah, yeah, he really does. Mm -hmm. Anyway, JT. JT sat down with his uh, good friend Jamie Fallon on The Tonight Show last night and announced a world tour starting in April. And he also talked about uh, working on the new album. Look. How many songs did you write? Because we ended up with like almost 100 songs. Um, Seriously, I remember, I've heard that's probably... That's not an exaggeration. I'm not saying that because it's a nice number to say on television. We ended up with almost, uh, almost 100 songs. And, and you um, cut it down. Narrowed it down to 18 songs. See, yeah. if I ever wrote 100 songs, I would release all 100 songs. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be so proud I did 100 songs. Go, That's it, man. That's every song I wrote in four years. There you go. Take it. I'm with Fallon. I would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I admire songwriters so much. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. It is a gift. We've talked about this. Mm -hmm. I admire songwriters. It's because it, it really is a gift from above. It, it just to have, whether it's, hear that. whether you hear the melody first or the, anyway, Justin, by the way, is a musical guest on Saturday Night Live this weekend. I can't 
I can't wait to I can't wait to hear He's the whole He's so album. funny on SNL. He is. <laughs> well, during the appearance, Justin also teamed up with Jimmy and the Roots. This is one of their best bits to sing a medley of his songs using classroom instruments. Look. I got that sunshine in my pocket. Love that. The xylophone. I know the xylophone. The xylophone, I can't. <laughs> I mentioned that Justin's new song is called Selfish. Well, it turns out someone else had a song with that same title. Justin's ex from many, many years ago, Britney Spears. Listen. Yep, well, so, audience. Here's the deal. Why am I talking about this? Well, that song came out in 2011, but Britney fans are on a mission to make the song a hit right now to kind of thumb their nose at Justin and take attention away from his new efforts. So Britney Selfish entered the iTunes charts for the first time this week. And as of Friday morning, it's number five. Wow. <laughs> Justin's song though is number one comfortably, but yeah. Britney fans, whether it's valid or not, I'm not here to judge that, mm -hmm. they hate Justin. Mm -hmm. And the fact that in mass they can do that, you got to give it to them. I just am like, uh, never mind, I don't want the emails. I don't want the emails from I know, Britney fans. Right? I don't. Not I'm on sorry. a Friday, right? I'm I know. Gonna, I'm not going to say We'll be really honest Monday through Thursday. Yeah. But on Fridays, we don't want the emails. No. I don't want the emails. And I love Indiana. Again, yeah. I just love it. He loves Indiana. <laughs> Indiana. We love Indiana. I love Indiana. <laughs> we'll be right back. Remember I said I had housekeeping things. I got so caught up in my love for the Hoosier State yeah. that I forgot to mention the other housekeeping thing. What? We have availability in our audience next week, and this happens in the winter. Some days we have 800 people like we do today, and some days, yeah. And some days we have like four people, a goat and a lamb. Yeah. And you know, and and that those are fun days, but we do have openings. Bring your friends, uh, get an office together. We have openings all week next week. We'd love to see you go to eventbrite.com, search for the Jason show. Come see us. I tell you crap in the commercial breaks. I can't tell you on TV. <laughs> it's true. I mean, uh, I, right today, mm -hmm. uh, they get to smell me. I have the audience smell me. I have it's a not new, awkward. I have a new cologne. That woman, yeah, I, I had a woman smell. I have a new cologne. I was testing it out on row one. So. Well, you can't test it out on Jeff anymore because he gets headaches from He does get so headaches you know, from my I mean, cologne. So, tested. yeah, anyway. Well, welcome back. Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, this is so funny, guys. If you need a smile, return to the television. Jimmy Kimmel loves to pull pranks on his staff. And Thursday night, his latest victim was the sidekick Guillermo. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy gave Guillermo a birthday gift he will never forget. Watch. What a great idea, man. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel. But Guillermo, you did say at Christmas that you wanted to do this. You would do this windsurfing? Well, I never try it, but I, I always wanted to try it. Oh, you do? <laughs> yeah. Oh, great. I feel like I'm in labor. I'm not ready, but I don't have no choice. Obviously can't show you the whole thing. Go watch it. I was crying laughing. It's so good. And I love that Guillermo was in a suit. Mm -hmm. Like he didn't change. And the smiley face uh, parachute. The whole thing was fantastic. What? 
I don't, I've done uh, that. don't you even get an idea? I'm not doing that. that. No, no. I don't like heights. I don't like getting wet. I'm like a mugwai. Like I know. I'm, no, I don't. No, no, no. More dish for you now. Fans of the Netflix show Queer Eye were shocked a few months ago when uh, one of the most popular guys of the Fab Five, designer Bobby Burke, announced that he was leaving the show when uh, Netflix starts new seasons. With some speculating that there was drama behind the scenes. Well, we finally know, yeah, there was drama, uh, but that's not the reason for his exit. So Bobby told Vanity Fair that the entire cast thought the show was done after season seven ended. So, because that's all they had a contract for, and Netflix gave no indication that they were going to re-up. So Bobby started accepting other projects. But during the writers and actors strike, Netflix wanted the Fab Five to come back, all of them, and film new seasons. The rest of the cast said yes, but Bobby was like, um, you know, I already have this other stuff. He did admit to having a small feud with his co-star Tan France, who handles fashion. Oh. Now, yeah, but Bobby, Bobby, Bobby didn't explain what happened. He only said it had nothing to do with the show. It wasn't a romantic thing and that they're slowly building a friendship again. I, I got to tell you, every celebrity should take a page from how Bobby handled this. And what I mean by that is Bobby was graciously honest so that it would kill all speculatory stories because in a vacuum, the Internet fills it with whatever rumors they think. Bobby said, yeah, uh, was there a, a fight? Yes, there was, but didn't give a lot of details mm -hmm. that would inflame Tan. Uh, then he said, yep, I didn't want to return because uh, I thought we were done. The way he handled it, now this story will die. Mm -hmm. the, the story will die. Bobby handled that with such grace and class. And you know what? It's realistic. Everybody can relate. We've all had a friendship that no matter how long it's gone, I've, I went through it, mm -hmm. where you had a long-time friendship and it's ended, and you just... It's, it happens in life. People grow apart or there's a small fight or whatever. It happens. The gossip balloons have all deflated. They're and they like, have. Mur, mur. Now, I will tell you I'm going to miss Bobby because he's the hardest working one on yeah, that you show. Were I that. Mean, yeah, you were saying that. He was the only one who didn't. I, he really, really is. Bobby has to, like, rebuild a house, you know? <laughs> and Anthony just has to make a crostini with some tomatoes, you know? <laughs> anyway, next up. I'm serious. He's the hardest one. I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> Next up. We all knew. Uh, we all know who Tom Holland is, right? Yes. Yeah. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Then he was yeah. Billy Elliot when he was a kid. Anyway. But do you know who Tom Hollander is? Oh. He's also an actor, probably best known for a scheming role in the most uh, recent season of White Lotus. The British actor, there he is right there was on Seth Meyers this week and told a hilarious story about getting confused with Tom Holland because they both have the same management company. Listen to what happened. And I thought I'd check my emails and I got an email from the agency saying, um, payment advice slip, your um, first box office bonus for the Avengers. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I thought... <laughs> I don't think I'm in the Avengers, <laughs> and it was um, it was an astonishing amount of money, and it was it was not his salary, it was it was his first box office bonus, <laughs> not the whole box office, the first one, and it was more money than I've ever. It was it was a seven figure sum. Yeah, and they he had was, to send it in two me two emails. He was he was <laughs> yeah two emails. <laughs> huh? mm -hmm. So. Hollander said it was nice to see how the other half lives, <laughs> even for a moment. He plays, by the way, Truman Capote in the new season of Ryan Murphy's Feud, Ooh. which I can't wait for that one. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine <laughs> getting like a bonus check? One bonus check. Not one. Yeah. Your first one. Not for your, not your salary. No. Just a bonus check for, I think the specula speculation, seven one point. Seven figures. It, he said it was seven, seven figures. figures. Yeah. Uh, no, or being the one who got it and being like, it's not for me. I it's can't not for me. It. Or you go to U.S. Bank to try to cash it, and 
And Phyllis is like, this ain't you. You know what I mean? No, he said too, he often, if someone hasn't seen him, but will be like, he, see his name, and oh, he's an actor, that they'll go, oh, my kids love you, they're so excited to meet you. And he'll be like, are you sure they're excited to meet me? And then he'll show up and they're like, he's not Spider-Man. I know, yeah. <laughs> how, how, that would be so sad. <laughs> yeah. Up next, it's one of the most defining movies of my generation and just the 80s in general. Anyone around uh, 49 <laughs> will remember <laughs> watching the John Hughes classic, The Breakfast Club. It's still a great movie nearly 40 years later. Well, listen to this. There she is. Oh, Molly. Star Molly Ringwald was on The Tonight Show on Thursday and talked about this memorable scene. Listen. The, the famous dance scene. Uh, when you, oh, yeah. When you do this, do, do you know... Yeah, do you know what you're going to do when you do it? Well, originally that character, my character of Claire, uh, who was originally called Kathy, um, I changed her to Claire because I thought that was fancier. Um, <laughs> sorry to Claire. Good job. Please. Yeah, yeah, sorry to Kathy, yeah. Uh, and yeah, she was supposed to be a really great modern dancer, and so there was a big scene where I was supposed to, I don't know, become like Martha Graham and impress everyone with my skills, but I was a... Uh, I was not a great dancer. I don't think I've ever been a great dancer. Um, so, yeah, so then he said, okay, well, let's just have everyone dance. And so that's how it became the sort of wow. everyone dancing. And I did my little move. But your little move and your yeah. dance move became a dance called the Molly Ringwald. I know, but I really just stole it from Belinda Carlisle on the Go Go. <laughs> <laughs> we all stole things from Belinda Carlisle in the 80s. Molly. Molly also says the original script for The Breakfast Club was much different than the final movie. Huh. Yeah. I wonder what, you know, like what, what made What the difference it so, was? Right. Yeah, I don't know. Because it's such a famous movie now. I I'll tell you really quick and we'll get to the next story. My favorite Molly, John Hughes, behind the scenes story. And once you know this, you'll never be able to look at it the same way. Let's talk pretty in pink. Mm -hmm. Just notice in the prom scene at the end how different Andrew McCarthy looks, his hair. That is because <laughs> they changed the ending. They had to reshoot it months later. And Andrew was bald when they had to call him back because he shaved it for a play. So he's wearing a, a wig. wig. Yes! And, it's, and, <laughs> and it's not a good wig. It, it, it looks like, a, like a, a collie sitting on his head. It's, yeah. Like they went over to the Halloween it's, Express. Oh, they went to Party City and <laughs> yeah. got it. Yeah. Next in the dish. Go back and look at it. You'll know what I mean instantly. <laughs> Next in the dish, it's the remake nobody was asking for, really. Jake Gyllenhaal stars in a new version of the Patrick Swayze movie Roadhouse. <laughs> now... <laughs> The only reason we're showing you this is because Jake is shirtless. There we go. Let me get him to threaten me. Tell me to get out of town. I get the impression that he can't be threatened. Once Knox is on the job, it's over, baby. It takes a lot to get me angry, but when I am, I just can't let go. People seem a little aggressive around here. Is that one in front of yours? No, I just broke his arm. <laughs> okay, fine, I'm excited. Jill and Hall plays a former UFC fighter turned bouncer. It hits prime. <laughs> It's also photographer Eric's career trajectory. Yeah. It hits Prime Video in March. The ladies have spoken. They were clapping before the clip was done. Oh, yeah. They were like, Whoa! Yeah. And the gays clap before that. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. Back in a Thanks for being here. Thanks for hanging with us. Hope you're having a good day. Well, it is another huge, huge weekend for football fans with two games that will decide who plays in Super Bowl 58 in Vegas. Now, you can't watch football without food. Lord knows I can't. And we're giving you, we're giving you something great to make this weekend here to show us how to make Detroit-style pizza with just... Settle down, row one! <laughs>
Detroit style pizza with only a few ingredients is the host of Taste Buds on Fox Local, Stephanie Hansen, everyone. Hey! I love. I like the this. front row Detroit Lions fans. This, yeah, this is such a good audience. I, it just makes my day. I love it. How you doing? I'm good. I am um, like I watch football for the commercials and the food, so we call it sports ball at our house. Yeah, <laughs> I I do the same thing. Yeah, like, I, and I, Super Bowl, like I'm super into it, but I watch all the things that no one else in my family is watching. And when the game part is on, I'm on my computer. I'm just a nerd because I'm excited about all the stuff that normal football people aren't excited about. I'm excited that it's in Vegas. I'm excited that all the broadcasting will be done in front of the Bellagio fountain. Yes. <laughs> The costumes, I, the pageantry, yeah. I the love commercials, it. the love singing, it all. who's going to do the anthem. Yep. Yeah. Okay, can we start with a fundamental yeah. question for people that may not know? Detroit-style pizza, how does that, what is defined as Detroit-style? Detroit-style pizza is bready. It is thick. It's almost like a focaccia base, and then it has the ingredients on top, and a hallmark of Detroit-style pizza is the cheese robe around the outside. Cheese robe? Cheese like, a, robe. like a robe that you put on while like you do your makeup? this little part right here is kind of the brown. That's sort of the cheese robe. Now, I'm going to show you a way to make this at home. So we're taking an enormous amount of shortcuts. So you're going to get a little bit different feel than you would if you went to a real Detroit-style pizzeria. They actually have special pans. Yeah. Like, it's a thing. But this is, but people don't have that. That's why That's you're doing right. this. Okay, we have a graphic. Leo, go ahead and put it up. This is what you, oh, look at your fancy graphics. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Those are Emmy award-winning graphics. <laughs> Salty today. A little salty, a little spicy. We'll be right back. <laughs> uh, no, so that's everything that you need. Okay, so let's do this. Yeah, so we are going to make a shortcut, right? Yeah. These are, we used Rhodes dough, frozen dough balls, and we set oh. them out last night. I sprayed the saran wrap with um, baking Bam. spray okay. yep, so that they don't stick. Rhodes, like is, as in R-H-O-D-E-S, R -R -H -O -D -E -S, R -H -O -D -E -S, Texas style rolls. Okay. So that's what it kind of looks like. They got a little knocked around in the car on the way here. You can also do the loaves, the bread loaves. And look how puffy these are. We're going to use this one today. It's going to be incredible. That looks like me after a visit to the Chinese buffet. <laughs> it's it's kind of how I feel right now. A little puffy. That's, take that shot, Leo. That's me and Jeff. That's us, yeah. And Stephanie. And Stephanie, right but there. But I yeah. never get invited. Okay. Ooh, oh. snap. Oh, okay. you're testing the limits of our oh, friendship yes. today. So I am just going in with this. Okay, oh, look at you. And I am pushing it down. Are and you supposed to be doing this? Yes, it's okay. making a little okay. sound. I'm going to do this one, too, because this is a lot of dough. This one's a little bit less, and Can I just want to show you. Yeah, okay. don't go all the way to the bottom, though. Keep in the middle. So don't touch the glass at the bottom. It'll do too much. Yeah, there you go. It's fun, isn't it? You're creating a dimpled area. Stop. <laughs> Wait, maybe a little there. Okay, so now we're going to put two tablespoons of olive oil on here. Two tablespoons. Yeah, and this is literally like what fries the bread, okay? Okay, that's a lot of olive oil, girl. Olive oil? so good for you. you is it, I know. You don't that. have to worry about no. olive oil. You're right. You're right. Okay. Now we're doing shortcuts. We're going to use pizza squeeze. Okay. Super easy. This is, this is how I know this is shortcut. You would rather lose a finger than use pre-made anything. You are exactly right, friend. And you know what? On my website, I have real sauce that you can make. Yeah. Because what I do, and this is a shortcut too, I just open this can and I put a can of tomato paste in there and I put the salt and the herbs and everything right in there. I go like that with my immersion blender and that's what I use for my at-home sauce. Yeah. But we're... And that's easy, sweet. That's easy. It is, but yeah. we're, we're going like... We're going late game day easy, right? Yeah, you exactly. cannot spend time in the kitchen. You want to get to the, the game. sports ball. Yeah. Okay, so we've got our sauce. Okay. You use about a cup and a half of sauce. Detroit style pizza is pretty saucy. I was gonna say because uh, there are some versions of like Chicago style. 
is very saucy it and is. has a thicker, yeah. And this is similar in Do the amount of sauce. you want to rub this one on there? Uh, I would love to rub. Okay, there so we go. I like a little seasoning, so okay. I just shake a little oregano. Okay. I'm going to shake a little salt. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. okay. We're going to, do you want it like chili and you like a little hot? I like a little, I want, a little you know, spicy. Colin loves it. Uh, I, I like it oh, hot now yeah, too. Yeah, your call. Ooh, yeah, he, oh hot. my God, he eats. I don't okay. even know how he has taste buds. Let's go with that. Yeah, okay. You can do a little oregano on yours, a little salt, a little chili. Okay. I'm gonna come over here, and cheese is very important. We have one minute to step yeah. away. Cheese is, yeah. Cheese is. Here's what you need to know about the cheese, okay? Okay. You want to get the cheese all the way up to the edge of your pan, and you want to grate your own. You want to grate your own mozzarella. And yes, the you do. Why, is Stephanie? Because caking agents are added to cheese in the bag, and it makes it not melt as well. Did you? And that's for anything. One of the best pieces of yes. advice Stephanie's ever given me. And I'm now with mac and cheese. Yep. I don't buy pre-shredded crap. You can't. No. It doesn't melt as you well. You can't. No. So here we go. This one is prepared. It is ready. We're going to sprinkle on some pepperoni. What you are looking for is you put this in the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. And you are looking for that cheesy, that cheesy edge, right? The robe. That cheese robe is the true see, I listen Detroit to you. style pizza. Yeah, the robe. Yeah, the robe. But you see how easy this is? Yeah. Like, and you could add olives, onions, whatever your family likes. It is just a super quick way to get pizza on the table. Should we have a quick taste? Can we? Yeah, we can. <laughs> I sounded like Oliver the orphan I there. I literally made this this please, morning. Please, Stephanie, may I have a portion? May I have more, please? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, it's going to be saucy, so don't get it on your fancy suit. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, to, friend. To Detroit. Oh, sure. <laughs> It's real sweet because the pizza sauce is sweet, the dough is sweet, but... The chef is sweet. <laughs> After she was all spicy with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I'm leaking. Yeah, it's real good. Okay, you're good. I got it. I got it, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Wait. Flag on the field. Flag on the field. Okay, so this is going to be fun. Oh, girl, you're messy. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> Look at your hands. I'm a anyway, little greasy. Look, look for Stephanie making these pizza again during the NFC uh, NFC Championship on Fox. I'll be able to say that. And later, Stephanie is going to be come back answering more of your food questions from our Facebook page. Be sure to. Welcome back to the show. Something new to watch on Netflix this weekend. We're always looking for new things to watch, so when we do, we tell you about it. Sofia Vergara stars in the drama Griselda, uh, going through a big transformation for the role. She did, oh yes she did. I started watching this last night and we'll share my thoughts in just a little bit, but first, Talk about that transformation. Sophia was on Kelly Clarkson yesterday, and Kelly didn't seem to, was just on, I think sometime this week, and didn't seem to think, Kelly didn't seem to think the change in her looks was a big deal, leading to this hysterical exchange. Watch. I feel like they only changed your nose or something. I don't know what, what they did. Like they did, like they changed. Are you crazy? No, I'm saying like whatever they did though, it looks slight. It doesn't look like, you know what I'm saying? Like when you look at you, it doesn't no, look. No, Kelly, it was ours. Here's what I'm saying. No, here's what I'm saying. It probably took time, but what I'm be saying jealous. is the slight change completely changed your being. Like it I was feel. It was a wig. Shut up. It Shut was up. a wig. Yeah. Right there, you'll see it. See right there? Look, everybody. You can see it right there. Sophia went through hours of makeup and prosthetics to get ready for the role. I think even like a chin change. Uh, Griselda, tell, by the way, and the, people were all over, it's a theme of overly sensitive people. People online got overly sensitive saying that Sophia was rude to Kelly. They're friends. That's how. That was funny. Uh, Jeff tells me to shut up every other day. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Griselda tells the real life story of a Colombian drug lord in the 70s, 80s, and 90s known as the godmother of cocaine. And uh, yeah, look at this. Uh, this, just watch her for a minute. You can listen to me if you want. But Sophia uh, disappears into this role. And uh, this is not 
I'll tell you right off the bat, this is this genre is not usually my cup of tea, uh, like Drug Lord, but I, you know, I, I liked Ozark, but this isn't usually my jam. We watched one episode last night, and I am enthralled. Like, I small L love it. Small oh. L love it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I small L love it. So much so that I, you know how sometimes you start something and you're like, maybe I'll go back to episode two and you never yeah, do? Right. Oh, I'm going back to episode two. Oh. I am going, yeah. I can't wait to watch this whole thing. It is based on a true story. Catherine Zeta-Jones. Catherine, Catherine Zeta-Jones played her a couple years ago in a Lifetime movie. Please, wipe the floor with that movie. Uh, this <laughs> is so good. Hmm. Probably, so what... I don't know if we're going to see a better role for Sophia. Not to limit her, but this is fantastic. So She's different. incredible. Yeah. So different from Modern Family. Very different from Modern Family, <laughs> so yeah. Different. It is, let me warn you, let me warn you, it ain't for kids. Uh, I mean, hello, it's about the godmother of cocaine. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hint, hint. Jason. Anyway, um, it's bloody, it's very violent. Yes. Very violent, and hello, there are drugs. There we go. Um, it's fantastic. Again, Small L loved it. Griselda is on Netflix. We'll be right back. Back in a moment with Stephanie answering your questions. And earlier, Stephanie Hansen sticking around. Earlier in the week, we got so many great questions from all of you for Steph on our Facebook page. We wanted to have her back to answer the rest of them. So, are you ready, friends? I think I'm ready. It's always, sometimes I don't know, but I'll try. That rarely happens. Rare, but it is a possibility. Okay, here we go. Karen is first. Hi, Karen. She asks, hey, Steph, when a recipe calls for a few tablespoons of sherry or brandy, what can be substituted? I don't want to buy a whole bottle just for a little smidgen. That's a, I, actually, that's a great question. I completely understand this problem. Try balsamic vinegar. Try Worcestershire sauce. You're looking for that kind of smoky, smoldery, umami flavor that you get from brandy and sherry, that earthiness. So try that instead. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. See, great... you can do this. Well, I can't cook with alcohol because my husband has all kinds of weird allergies. Oh, so yeah. I'm substituting things all the time. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Carla. Hi, Carla. She says, hey, Steph. Uh, she asks, what works best to thicken sauce? Flour? or cornstarch? It's a little bit of both because if you're going to use flour, you have to cook it out. So you have to like make a roux or you have to have it in your pan where you're cooking it. Otherwise, cornstarch, I try to use as little of that thinning agent as possible. Sometimes like if you're making a bean soup, I'll puree the beans, half of them to give it that thickness. So I would say generally my answer to that is flour, but make sure that you're cooking the taste out. When I make biscuits and gravy, and when I'm making my gravy, I always use flour. Cornstarch, for whatever reason, gives it... It gets a little weird. It can get metallic. It, it can. Someone was, was tenderizing their meat with baking powder and wondering why you could taste it. I was like... Because you can taste it. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that. You can use other things to tenderize meat. And really, most of the meat that we're buying now these days is pretty, pretty tender. tenderized, with the exception of maybe flank steak. And then I would use lime or acid of citrus instead. Uh, Suzanne is next. Hi, Suzanne. She goes, hey, Steph, how long do fresh mushrooms last in the fridge? They always seem to get slimy so quickly, and then I'm afraid to use them. Okay. Fresh from the grocery store is... Uh, like, we don't know when they got to the grocery store, right? So they're probably not fresh to start with. But they're fresher, freshest. You don't want to wash your mushrooms. I'm thinking maybe you're washing them and then putting them in the refrigerator, and that's why they're getting slimy so fast. Once you wash a mushroom, you start it decaying right away. So don't wash them when you get them home. If you feel the need to wash them, you can wash them right before you use them. I don't wash them. I just wipe them with a paper towel. Um, what? Yes. You're going to keep the mushroom. That Yelp you integrity. heard was Kendall. Uh, that's right, off mic. But generally, the answer is five to seven days, but most mushrooms won't last that long. No, I, I usually see them go bad like one to two days. Yeah, and plus, ooh, a bad mushroom? Uh uh. Uh huh. No, no. If they're slimy, get rid of them. Yeah, that's a general rule for everything. Trish. <laughs> Trish has the next question. When they say add warm water to yeast, is there an exact temperature? Seems like mine never works. It's either too hot or not warm enough, and it doesn't rinse. Eno this is a great, another great question. Rising is challenging, especially in Minnesota or the Midwest, because we have cold kitchens because it's cold out. 
So it's room temperature, which is like if you put it on your wrist, like baby milk, it feels like it's not going to burn you. Too hot kills the yeast. Too cold doesn't activate the yeast. So it's supposed to be like 68 degrees, like whatever, or excuse me, 98 degrees, whatever your body temperature is. Also, I would say the reason your stuff's not rising is probably not that reason. It's that your yeast is either old or you aren't having a warm enough kitchen. And the way you can test that is pick a piece of dough off, put it in a glass of water, and see if that dough rises. If it doesn't, it's not going to rise. God, you're good. Uh, you know. <laughs> Finally, Julie asks, hey, Steph, is there a food you hate? Yeah. I hate um, liver. I don't love uni, which is like when you go to get sushi sometimes, they try to give you the uni. The oh, I I should know this. What the hell is uni? It's sea urchin. And it, um, like, they I serve worked it to for you and you, like... <laughs> <laughs> Mim is not a sea urchin. <laughs> no. Anyway, go ahead. It's not um, Mim, no. Yeah, you eat it and it has, like, this weird viscosity of jelly. I don't love, like, fish roe. So, like, I like caviar if it's small, but, like, the big salmon-y orange eggs that pop in your mouth. No Can you pick you. a non-fancy food? <laughs> Okay, non-fancy food that I don't like, um, pineapple. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Stephanie. For recipes, head to stephaniesdish.com. We'll be right back, back in a moment. <laughs> Do you not like to, I didn't know that about you. We're going to end how we began. Once again, if you are a firefighter and you would like to help Jeff ignite his fireplace for the fair, uh, ignite, <laughs> for the very first time, uh, go ahead and email us. We need supervision uh, because we don't want to set anything on fire in Jeff's condo. So and that's Eric right. Eric will be there, so you know we're safe. Well, that for is sure. no, 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 no. That's even scarier. The fact that Eric is going to be there. Pretty yeah, great. I mean, tr truly. So if you are a firefighter and you have uh, some free time, yeah. go ahead and uh, DM us uh, and Thanks. you could win a trip to Jeff's condo that's right <laughs> all expense paid trip um, hey coming up next week on the show you've asked for it it's become the most popular thing we do uh, next week it's the return of fast food field trip uh, that's right this week it's Tuesday this week Jeff photographer Eric uh, and I jump in an unmarked van uh, in which we will debut our brand new producer. That's right. Y'all, R.I.P. Ted. I know, I mean, he's, he's still alive. He's still alive. I'm just saying, uh, you'll get to meet our new producer. He jumps in the car, and we're trying. It's a he. It's a he. Oh, oh, crap. I, yeah, I did you, say it's a he. Yeah. It away. Whatever. Fine, they're gonna know in like four days. Anyway, <laughs> we try all of the new items from, uh, from uh, either. You can't get that away, too. Oh. Stop talking. John Sigamora is here on Monday. He's showing us how to, how to dress up store-bought ramen. But right now, that's going to do it for us. I'm in mourning. Leave me alone. Go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Bye, everybody.